Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today, with the last property of systems, that is linearity. Okay? So, again, based on uh, the property of linearity, we could have a system to be linear or a system could be non linear. Fine. So now this, I have wrote the basic definitions, okay? If you don't understand it from reading, you will understand it once we get into the video, right? After five, five or five, six minutes, okay? So a linear system is a system that follows the principle of superposition. Now, what is this principle of superposition? So let me tell you first that it would have two parts. It has two parts. The first it would be the law of additivity and the second would be the law of homogeneity so the superposition consists again of two parts so if a system obeys the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity that system is said to be a linear system and what is this thing so I'm going to discuss it wait, wait. now what does this mean we are explaining the principle of superposition in words if an input consists of weighted sum of several signals you know what a weighted sum is weight something is multiplied sum then you add them up then the output is the superposition so what does the superposition mean that the output is the weighted sum of the responses of the system to each of those signals so if you add the inputs you have multiplied them with some uh, coefficients complex number so the output will also be the same output for the input multiplied with that coefficient. Now you don't understand this in words. I will write it over here. If you have an input, let's say x1 of t. The output for this is y1 of t. You have another input x2 of t. The output for this is y2 of t. Right? Now, so the principle of superposition, the first, if you add the inputs x1 of t plus x2 of t, you get the output, this would be what? The weighted sum of the responses to each of the signals. So which means that this would be the sum of these two responses, which is y1 of t plus y2 of t. This is the law of additivity. Fine? Let me name it 1. Let me name this 2. So now the 2 would say what? If you do what? If you multiply it by a coefficient a times x1 of t. So this would give you the output to be y1 of t. And the weighted sum. So the weighted sum is a is the weight. So you have to multiply it with an a. Is that okay? This is the law of homogeneity. Which means that if I write it generally, if I write it generally, so this would be like this. The principle of superposition states A times X1 of T plus B times X2 of T, the output of the system. If this is a linear system, it would be A times Y1 of T plus B times Y2 of T. This is what it is going to be. Fine. Similarly, you can have in the discrete time domain a times x1 plus b times x2. So if I just generally represent it by a summation, by a summation where a is the coefficient, x is the input, let's say discrete time is n. So let's say this is the summation interval is over k. So if this is the input to a linear system, the output of this system would be Again, summation over k, the coefficient a k, now y k of t. So this is what you have combined, the additivity and homogeneity. This is called the principle of superposition. Now, these were the basic definitions, the book definitions. Till here we have the definition. Now we understand it, okay? So the principle of superposition consists of additivity, consists of homogeneity. Now how do we check? So let me now tell you. So first, let's say I talk about 
additivity the law of additivity why is this marker not working properly the law of additivity is what if you have to check it so the step wise the procedure of example or problem would be like this you have an input x 1 of t for this you have an output y y 1 of t right you have another input x 2 of t you have the output y 2 of t fine now what do you do? You add these two inputs. Or let me do it another way. Let me do it another way. Wait, please, wait. How do you do it? Let's say you have provided this to the system. You have provided this to the system. And this gives you the output to be y1 of t. Fine. Similarly, you have x2 of t and you provide it to the system. These are the same system, okay, to which x1 is feed. x2 and x1 will be feed to the same system. So now for x2 of t, the output would be y2 of t. Now what do you do? You add the two inputs together, the two outputs together. The two outputs are added, so this word, the output, the final output would be y1 of t plus y2 of t. Isn't it so? It is. This is the first step in the law of additivity, right? The first step. The second step is what? You take the first input, you take the second input, you add them first. You add them first. And now you provide the added input which is x1 plus x2. You provide this added input into the system. Into the same system. We have only one system, right? So, now what do you get is, the output is, let's say, y dash of t. This is another output, which is called y dash of t. Fine. So, now we could have two possibilities. The first possibility is that uh, y dash of t could be equal to y1 plus y2. So if this is equal, this means that this obeys the law of additivity. Obeys additivity. And if this y dash of t is not equal to the individual sum of outputs, this means that it does not obey additivity. Fine. So this is about the law of additivity. The next thing we check is over here, let's say, the second is the law of homogeneity or it's also called scaling. This I will check in the book and I will let you know. Homogeneity or scaling. Now what do you do in this particular case? You have your input x of t. You have provided it to your system to get the output y of t. Now you multiply it. You scale it with a scaling factor. So the output would be k times y of t. Fine. This is step number one again in this. The step number two is what? You take your input x of t, you scale it first. So the input would now be k times x of t. The output of this particular system, but now our modified input is k times x of t. You provide this to your system. The same system. So you get an output, let's say, y dash of t. Now again, you have two possibilities. If this y dash of t is equal to k times y of t, the output is set, the system is uh, said to be obeying the law of homogeneity. Whereas, if this y dash of t is not equal to k times y of t, we say that this system does not obey the law of homogeneity. Fine. 
So these are the basic concepts. A linear system has to obey the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition consists of law of additivity, law of homogeneity. So which means that a linear system has to obey both the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity. So this was the methodology. These were the basic definitions. These are the methodology for your questions or examples. So now let me erase the board where is the duster and I will get into examples. So all right. So I've written some examples down for myself. T times x of t. So this could be a little longer this video right y of t is t times x of t so you check for additivity first additivity and I would just write it in shortcut right so the step number one in additivity was what uh, you have uh, inputs uh, let's say x1 of t so the output would be y1 of t which would be t times x1 of t right and then for the input x2 of t, the output would be y2 of t, which would be t times x2 of t. So now what you do is, you add the outputs, y1 of t plus y2 of t. So this would give you what? t times x1 of t plus t times x2 of t. So can I take t common and I would write x1 of t plus x2 of t. So this is your first step. Now in the second step you do what? You add the inputs first. So you have x1 of t plus x2 of t. This is your input. Now I will look for the system. The system is doing what? The system is multiplying t with the current value of input. So which means our y dash of t, this would be equal t times the current input. And the current input is x1 plus x2 of t. So have a look. This is equal to y1 plus y2 so which means the law of additivity is satisfied homogeneity now so homogeneity let's say HOM so the first step is that you have your input you have your input x of t the system y of t you have it y of t is t times x of t fine now you uh, scale it by a scaling factor k so the output would be k t x of t fine now what do you do in the second step you take your input x of t you scale it first so the modified input would be k times x of t now you feed it into the system so the system is multiplying t to the current value of input so this is the current value of input so t times k x of t so this is again equal which means the homogeneity law is also satisfied and this system is a linear system this is a linear system as both of them are satisfied. Fine. The second x squared of t. y of t is x squared of t. So, again the additivity law first. So, step number one is you have your uh, Output, let's say for, for the first input you have y1 of t is x1 squared. For the second input you have x2 squared. Fine. You, you do what? You add them up. y1 plus y2 would be x1 squared plus x2 squared of t. Right? Now in the second step what you do is you, you add the inputs x1 plus x2. And now you provide it to the system. So the system does what? It takes the square of the inputs. It takes the square. So the, so the input is this particular thing. So which means that you have x1 plus x2 whole square. Which means that this would come out to be x1 squared plus x2 squared plus 2x1 x2. So have a look. These two are not equal. So the law of additivity is not being satisfied. So if, if any one of them is not satisfied, this means that this system is a non-linear system. 
Fine. The third. Well, I too, I did not mention the most important property. For a linear system, if the input is zero, the output is zero. For a linear system, if input is zero, the output is also zero. This is called the zero in, zero out property. Fine? The input is zero, the output is also zero. So, number third. Well, it could also happen for a... Uh, it is must for a linear system, okay? It may also happen for non-linears. As in this case, if the input is zero, the output is also zero, but the system is non-linear. Y of t is equal to 2 times x of n plus 3. So we have it in the discrete time. Y of n is 2 times x of n plus 3. So have a look. If the input is 0, the output is not 0. The output is 3. Y of 0 is 3. So we can directly say that the system is nonlinear. We can directly say from this property that the system is nonlinear system. Or if you want to go stepwise, so you can go stepwise always. Well, the stepwise I leave it to you, okay? You do it yourself, the stepwise. I'll go to the next. Y of t is x of sine of t. Y of t is x of sine of t. So again, additivity first. So what does you do? You, you have y1 of t for uh, x1 of sine of t. You have y2 of t for x2 of sine of t. So if you add them up, y1 plus y2, so this would be x1 of sine of t, x2 of sine of t. Let me confirm this. Is this in the argument or what? Yes, this is fine. So, I'm now in the step number 2. So, I should write it where? Over here, okay? No, I'll finish this example over here. So, number 2. Number 2 step would be to first add the inputs. So, x1 of t plus x2 of t. You have taken this, you, you provide it to your system. So now the output would be what? x into sine of t. So this means x1 plus x2 whole into sine of t. So this would be x1 plus x2 whole into sine of t. Isn't it like this? So this would come out to be x1 of sine of t plus x2 of sine of t. So these are obeying, so additivity is satisfied. Now homogeneity. So in homogeneity you do what? What do you do in homogeneity? So you have your y of t, which is x of sine of t. You multiply it with a scaling factor k, you have k times x of sine of t. The next step is what? The second step is to first scale the input. So you have k times x of t and now you provide it to your system. So have a look. You would have k times x of sine of t, which means that these two are also equal. So this property is also satisfied and the system is said to be a linear system. Fine. x of t square number 5 y of t is x of t square so again additivity first 
if uh, you have y1 of t for x1 of t squared, so you, you may have y2 of t for x2 squared, x2 of t squared, right? So if you add them up, y1 of t plus y2 of t, so this would be x1 of t squared plus x2 of t squared. In the step number 2, you have x1 of t, you add it with x2 of t, now you provide it to your system. So now uh, what would be the case? So the output would be what? This would be, it's doing what? It is taking the square of the time. So this would be x1 of t squared plus x2 of t squared. So however, these are both the same. <coughs> so this means that this is a uh, additivity satisfied. Now for homogeneity. So the first step again, you have your uh, y of t which is x of t squared so you, you, you scale it by a scaling factor k so the output would be k times x of t squared and, and what do you do in the second step you have your input x of t you scale it by k you have k times x of t so you now provide it to your system so at k times x of t, the, the, the system is doing what? It's scaling the time. So k times x of t squared. So this means that again, this, this system is also a linear system. So have a look. Time scaling was involved over here in some sort of a fashion. This is a linear system. Over there, we had an operator on time, which was again time scaling. This is again a linear system. So this means that we could... Uh, conclude that system linearity <coughs> is independent of time scaling. System linearity is independent of time scaling. Fine. So you want me to finish this video over here? It's getting longer. So, yes. I finish it over here because I've taken a little longer time. I have some more examples, so I continue with it uh, in the next video, maybe. Wait. Yes, next video is fine. Okay. So, see you in the next video very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourself. Goodbye.